Hello, my name is Kate Crowley. I'm on the faculty in the program of Communication Sciences and Disorders at Teachers College, Columbia University. I've created these video modules with my co-author, Georgia Duan. Welcome to Module 10 of Differential Diagnosis and Preschool Evaluations, a Case Study. In this module, we are going to discuss recommendations for the child's IEP goals. Once we have created the evaluation, then we have to think about the IEP. What did we learn in the evaluation that will help us determine the annual goal and the short-term goals? With this child, we learned that his morphology, semantics, and syntax were within normal limits for expressive and receptive language. We also identified that he did not need articulation therapy as he had many more sounds than would be developmentally expected for his age. What we want to focus on is his difficulty in planning and sequencing the production of sounds, sometimes syllables, sometimes words, especially vowels and short function words. Individual words at the end of sentences we found close to 80% intelligible given developmental errors. We found morphemes omitted within sentences due to planning and sequencing deficits, but he demonstrates understanding and production of all age-appropriate morphemes within single word utterances or the final word in a sentence where plurals, possessives, and verb tense markers are present. We include the diagnosis at the beginning of the IEP, sequencing and planning deficits, which significantly impact intelligibility, and we quantify that as moderately severely impaired, say a 33% delay. We know he is young, only two years, 10 months old, but his intelligibility is really quite compromised. He's a bright boy with good problem-solving skills. We saw him make inferences and learn new information right in front of us. And this deficit has affected his communication and his activities in school. By the way, we also saw, of course, he had great play skills. Our first goal is intelligibility and verbal interaction with, in the classroom with peers and teachers so that that will improve. With this boy, we want to engage the parent who is one of his greatest strengths. She's wonderful and engaged with an incredibly deep, trusting relationship and commitment to her son. And she brings her knowledge and skills as a school psychologist. Based on how he spoke about his dad, I'm sure the same is true as his relationship with his dad. We want the parent, teacher, and therapist to identify certain short sentences consisting of noun phrase, verb phrase, object that Alice can use to interact with his peers in the classroom, e.g., what is your name? Can I play? I want the mm, please. It's my turn. I need a blump. We want them to identify the 10 sentences that will help Alex interact with his peers almost immediately so we can practice and practice and practice at home and in therapy and then start to use them in the classroom. We want to make sure to include a multisensory approach which was helpful to him in the evaluation. If we tapped on his arm or used exaggerated intonation or we had him repeat it and we exaggerated what we were doing visually or motorically, Alex was more intelligible. He did better. We incorporate into our IEP goals strategies and supports that we found effective. For that reason, we include the multisensory approach as part of Alex's IEP goals. If you remember, da dom, da di. We also want to provide Alex with multisensory prompts to sequence sentence segments for increased intelligibility in longer sentences. The second annual goal gets to the nitty gritty of the situation, addressing the vowel variability. Here, the goal for Alex is to acquire the ability to plan and sequence alternating vowels in V, CV, and CVC combinations. This boy is young, only two years, 10 months old. He really wants to develop clearer speech, and we learned in the eval that he practiced and practiced to say mommy instead of mama and daddy instead of dadom. This is going to take some work and lots of repetition. All of these goals have to be presented as fun speech drills in order to engage him in the drill-based practice he needs to improve his speech abilities. We scaffold the goals leading up to varied CVZ combinations so Alice can work towards mastery of varied vowel consonant combinations. The third annual goal is to practice repetitive phrases from storybooks. He loves his storybooks. From head to toe and click clack boo, he could definitely be working reading stories, which they do a lot of at home. 
He could use those stories to practice his sounds and sentences. It would be an easy addition to the book reading that they already do and that they all love. If he says kick cat boo for click clack boo, who cares? That's fine. He doesn't have, need to have CL cluster combinations at two years, 10 months, or really even for two more years. The fourth annual goal is to increase the number of words he says clearly that he can use in school. In this goal, well, ident the teacher, parents, and therapists identify a list of words that are gonna help him communicate more. It could be the names of the toys he likes, Lego. It could be the name of a food he likes, Cookie. He will keep repeating these words, his magic words, each week to expand and practice words that will be contextually useful in school. We need to get the data back from the parent and the teacher and use that with the therapist to encourage him to use those 10 magic words. His final goal will be to use his developing intelligible language with a peer of the same chronological age. It will be important for the teacher and parent to identify one to two appropriate communication partners for Alex in his school who will be accepting and supportive of him. We want him to develop peer relationships with the trust he has with his mom and also started to develop with me in such a short period of time and certainly I'm sure has with his dad so that he is willing to make mistakes with them and willing not to be understood. We want him to acquire strategies to begin to join in conversations and play interactions using his new sentences and words to develop strategies to increase his intelligibility in social situations and beyond to generalize it to other peers in the classroom. We want 80% accuracy and the method will be observational checklists by the end of each marking period, November, February, April. Those are the IP goals that will give him what he needs in terms of developing his speech skills so he is much more intelligible. And the new IEP goals we develop for this child, we include repeating sentences that will be a part of his daily interactions, actions, V, CV, and CVC combination, so he starts to practice speech sounds in fun drills, repeating phrases from his beloved storybooks, and a series of magic words that he can use at school, and identifying peer communication partners, which will be important for him to generalize all of these skills in these new goals. I would like to say that last, a few, last week, I visited Alex in his preschool and I saw that in just that one month of this work on the new IEP goals that the mom is doing regularly as is the teacher, his intelligibility has increased very significantly. I was so happy to see it. Um, and so I want to report happily that he's made enormous progress. This ends our module series on differential diagnosis and preschool evaluations, a case study. We hope you found it useful. If you want more resources for appropriate preschool evaluations, the Leaders Project website has a series of modules which include video tutorials featuring language samples of preschoolers and dynamic assessment activities. Also on the website are model evaluations for monolingual and bilingual preschoolers, as well as critical reviews of current widely used standardized tests. Thank you.